Okay, welcome to lesson six. I think we're on now of 10.06, guys. So we have our LO at the bottom. Our title is Completing the Square. And if you can pause the video and spend 10 minutes working through the retrieval task. Again, we're looking at really refining these skills that are usually mostly the building blocks of any mathematical task. Okay, let's have a look at the answers. Get your green pens at the ready. So if you can be marking these now, ticking the ones you've got correct, having to think about which areas maybe you need to practice. Do you need to practice perimeter? Do you need to practice your bid mass orders of operations? Well done to you for the ones that you got correct. So today we're going to be looking at completing the square. So first I want to look at where this comes from. So let me get my trusty laser pointer. So say we have a simple expression, just like x squared plus bx. Having x twice in the same expression can make life a little bit tricky. So let's have a look at it from a geometrical perspective with pictures. So if we've got x squared, that means that we've got x times by x so we can represent that as a square because our x's are the same our bx we can say that on the top it's length b and again the length here is x so b times by x gives us bx so what we can do with this bx bit here is we can slice it down the middle put one half here and one half here so as you notice we have a square here but we're missing this tiny little bit here, this tiny little green square, which is essentially b over 2, yep, times by b over 2. So it's b over 2 squared. So as you can see, the x squared plus bx can be rearranged nearly into a square. And we can complete the square when we add our little green square here, our little green b over 2 squared. So in algebra, it looks like this x squared plus bx plus our little completing the square bit is equal to x plus b over 2 times by x plus b over 2. So we're going to use that today to look at a different form of factorization. So if you can pause the video now and copy this diagram for me and also this so what it looks like geometrically and what it also looks like in algebra so pause the video and take two minutes three minutes copying both of those down okay so there are things called perfect squares so if we look here so our x plus three squared when we expand that here is what we end up with. So on the side, we can see what our power forms are. So 3 squared means 3 times by 3, which gives us 9. And as we can see, our 3 here. So if we had x plus 3 and another bracket that had x plus 3, our final value is always going to be 9. The coefficient for our x is always going to be this number added to itself. So can you pause the video now for me and spend two minutes trying to solve as many, trying to expand as many as these as you can and find out what they are equivalent to? So here we are. Here's some of those answers. If you can mark them and tick them with your green pen. Now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at sometimes they will ask you to write a quadratic in the complete the square form and this is that complete the square form so so let's look at the perfect square for x plus a half of this because remember we're breaking that bit up geometrically and sharing it on either sides of our square so let's look at x plus 2 squared now that expands to this now let's compare that 
to what we have here. So we've got the x squared, we've got the 4x, and we've got 4, not 10. Hmm. So you can look at that and say, well, we need to add 6. So we need this with a 2 here, plus 6 will get us there. But if we have a look, so we've got x squared plus 4x plus 10. That's equal to rx plus 2 squared, which we've shown here. If we add on our 10 at the end and we take away our 4, because we don't want that 4, but we do want a 10 to match. So if we cancel that, it becomes 6. So we've got x plus 2 squared plus 6. So our a is equal to 2 and our b is equal to 6. Now looking at that, let's try and do some together. So we use a half this. So in our brackets, we have x plus 9 over 2, all squared. We add the 5 that we have at the end. And then we need to remember to take away this value squared. Because if we expanded these, if we expanded this squared, it would be brackets x plus 9 over 2 brackets x plus 9 over 2. So we need to remember that we're taking away that 9 over 2 squared. So if we simplify this, we've got x plus 9 over 2 squared plus 5 minus, so we square both terms, 81 over 4. So then if we simplify this, we end up with 20 over 4, take away 81 over 4, and it leaves us with x plus 9 over 2 squared minus 61 over 4. If you've got that copied down, make sure you pause the video and now spend two minutes trying to complete the square for the we do. And there is the answer. Again, make sure you're correcting that or ticking it if you've got it correct. Now on to the next one. So let's try... In the brackets, x plus 3 over 2, so we'll take a half of this, x plus 3 over 2 all squared, plus the 5. Then we need to take away this value squared. So our bracket stays the same. Let's get a common denominator here, so we get 20 over 4, and then square the numerator and the denominator. So we're subtracting 9 over 4. If we simplify this, here is what we get. So if you can now spend two minutes trying to solve the we do. And there is your answer. Again, make sure you're marking it and make sure you're copying it down. So now we have negative number here. So let's try this. So we're going to have to take a half of this. So in the brackets, we're going to have x minus, subtract 3 over 2 squared. Get my laser pointer back. We add our 5, as we've done, and then we need to take away the square of this. So now if we take away negative 3 over 2 squared, so if we square both of these, so negative 3 squared is going to give us 9, negative 2 squared is going to give us 4. So it's still negative when we take it away. So we end up with x minus 3 over 2 squared added to 11 over 4. If you can now pause the video and spend two minutes trying to solve the we do. And here is your answer. Again, we've took half of this term here, put it into our brackets, and then we take away the square, the square of that, and we remember to add our term. Let's have a look at another example. So we take half of this here, so we get x minus 3 squared. We add the 5, because we still need that, and then we have to take away the little green cube that we added on. So we need to take away minus 3 squared. So minus 3 squared is going to give us net positive 9. We then take that away from 5 and then simplified. Here we go. Now again, like I've like I've uh, written here, 
you can expand that to double check. So we'd end up with x squared minus 3x minus 3x. So collectively, they would make negative 6x. And then minus 3 times by minus 3 is 9. Take away 4, we get positive 5. So if you can pause the video now and then give the we do a go. And there is the answer for the weeder. Again, you can expand that if you get the time and double check that it takes you back to the we do. Takes you back to the problem, the question. So now I would like you to spend seven minutes. You can pause the video. Remember to use your books to work through this independent work and model exactly how we've done it together in the I do's. There are the answers for you. Make sure you're green penning these. Make sure you're trying to look on your own for a pattern as to where you're showing good habit, where you're potentially finding pitfalls so that we can try and avoid these. Well done guys, that's the end of this lesson. You've learned a brand new skill, been able to look at it geometrically and algebraically, which hopefully will make it stick in your mind. Now is an opportunity for you to think about what you did well, what you struggled with, and how you can target that. It's also an opportunity for your teacher to offer out any achievement points or any top performer awards. Well done and have a nice day.